Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. In this one today I'm going to be showing you how you can create professional animations inside of Unreal Engine. Now this is a beginner tutorial and it is really really easy to follow so sit back grab a coffee and let's get started. Okay here we are inside of Unreal Engine and I've just loaded up the third person template map. I have made no changes to this map it's just the default template basically. As you can see here right we need to go into the content folder and we need to open up the let me just clear these fillers um it's going to be all content characters mannequins rigs and then it's going to be the cr mannequin and we're just going to drag it into the map this will open up the sequencer and the sequencer curve we're going to close off the curves we don't need that for this tutorial that is for blending the animations and making them smoother but what we do need to do is right click the cr mannequin body and convert it to a spawnable actor. This is so that when we click play in the map, it will not spawn the mannequin inside the map because we don't need that. We only need this for animating, basically. Next, we're going to change the FPS to 60 to make the animations a little bit smoother. And if you want to as well, you can show time as seconds. This makes it a little bit easier for me to get my head around, but that's personal preference. Next, let's click global control and we're going to select the arm L, F, K, I, K, switch, and the arm, R, F, K, I, K, switch. <laughs> I thought that was a mouthful. This will give us two little cubes around our arms, and it's basically the best way to animate for me, and it'll stop us, like, stretching the mannequin out, so we're going to use them to control what we're doing here. Next, what you want to do is, with the CR mannequin body selected, we're going to press enter on our keyboard at time zero, just like I have here, and it'll give us all these little keyframes. And then what you can either do is just copy and paste them towards the end. So if I just move to the end frame, so let's just minimize that, copy all this and paste it to the five second mark, just like this. So this is the end frame here. I've just pressed control and V on my keyboard to paste them. So the start and the end of the animation will be the exact same. Okay, sweet. Next, I need to collect this little key icon here and this is the automatic keyframe change so when we change something inside this sequencer it will automatically key it for us so as you can see I just changed the wrist and the wrist is now rotating back to the original point so this is the new point which we just rotated and then the five second point will be the end point now let me select this cube and let me just rotate it like this and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to position the mannequin into a more natural position and this is why we're using the uh, the FK IK switch is so that we don't stretch our mannequin when we are animating so just like this the FK IK switch has constraints I do believe so that's basically why you cannot uh, stretch the mannequin and make it look weird. So this is looking pretty good for me. I think this is a semi-natural position. And what we can do now is let's just select there and as you can see we are moving from the start point to the end point. So we're moving from our normal starting position back to the original one. So I'm going to change this back to frames just so I can see and I'm going to move it, let me see, let's try 15 frames forward and then what we can do is grab our cube and we can animate our arm. So what this is doing is going from 0 to 15 and it's going to blend between the keyframes. So we're now at 15 frames in and we can actually move our arm or move our wrist up a little bit and you can see it will bend our elbow with it just like this and I'm going to position it and I'm just going to rotate it until it looks something something decent okay so here we are we're now pulling our arm up from 0 to 15 and I've decided that what I'm going to do is make a rock paper scissors animation so let's just carry on positioning our wrist just like this and then we can rotate backwards a little bit like that and if you're wondering how I'm switching between the rotation and the move modes, I'm just pressing space on the keyboard. Right, okay, so if I play our little animation now, we click play, and you can see the arm moves up, but it's pretty fast. Um, what we can do, we can actually just drag it from 15 frames, just drag it a little bit forward, something like this here. Let's drag it to 50, see what happens. If we click play, 
in the bottom left, you can see the arm moves up a little bit more smoothly. Yeah, just like that. And here, what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the arrows on each knuckle, and I'm just gonna rotate them to like curve them inwards to make some kind of a fist shape. And we can also grab the bones on the knuckles by selecting each one while holding shift and it will move them all at the exact same time. Just like this. And this is a little bit of trial and error. As you can see the arrows are facing like a really weird way now. But let's try and get them facing upwards a little bit. Just like that. I think that looks okay for me. Like I said you can spend a lot more time doing this and perfect your animations and make them look professional. This is how we are curling our hand inward now. And let's just rotate it just like this, make it look a little bit more natural. Yeah, just like that. And then we'll move on to the thumb, because the thumb always tucks in when people make a fist. So let's drag down just like that, move that in, and then we're going to select the knuckle a little bit further up. And we're just going to rotate that inwards like that. And then maybe select the back knuckle and just do that. Some kind of a basic fist shape. Now if we click play, we're making a fist shape. And then we will go back to the default pose just like this. So I'm just going to move a few frames forward. And I'm going to rotate the wrist and change this animation a little bit. Okay, so what I've done here, I've just copied the pose and I've just pasted it a couple of frames forward because what we're going to do we're going to go in between the two keyframes now and then we're going to move the wrist back down and you will see exactly why I'm doing this in a moment so let's just rotate just like this and move the fist down just a little bit move it forward so the shoulder doesn't pop too much inward a little bit and now you can see we're going to make this like punching animation here we go so we're going rock paper and then eventually we'll do scissors now i still think this animation is a little bit too fast so i'm just going to select this one and move it over here and then we're going to spread out each keyframe so you can see it's really really fast we can fix this by just dragging out the keyframes and making a little bit more space in between them. So we're going rock, paper, and then we will eventually do scissors. So every time I click Control and S to save this project, by the way, it is opening up every single bone on the body. And I just have a really bad habit of doing it. That's why I keep having to scroll up and sort it out again. So I'm just going to select this one and I'm just going to drag it all the way out here and make a little bit of space and it should, see you can do it, you can see it goes a little bit smaller and I've just pressed Control S again. <laughs> right, so let's just select this one, drag it all the way out here, drag it all the way out here and this one and then we're just going to leave the other two I think. Let's just make a lot of space in between them so the animation looks a little bit smoother. Okay, so rock, paper, and then we will go back up and then down into scissors. And this is the cool thing about having all my keyframe on the little checkbox. Uh, so, like, whenever we make a change into like open space on the timeline, it creates a new keyframe and it'll save it. Okay, so looking through this animation, I feel like it looks a little bit too, like, repetitive. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add some rotation to the arm on the second one. Just like this, drag it out a bit, and just move it around a bit, just so it doesn't look like we've copied and pasted the exact same little bit from before. And then we can copy this one back to the default and paste it here. And I reckon this last keyframe will be our scissors. So rock, 
paper and then we will go into scissors just like this and the animation is changing all the way through because we've just rotated it a little bit okay we're looking pretty good so now what i'm going to do i'm actually going to rotate the wrist and shape it into scissors so i'm just going to come around here and then i'm going to make all the well I'm going to make the last two fingers curl in a little bit so let me just select the knuckles and there's one select the other knuckle and two and then we'll have a little look round this looks pretty good like that and then just curl the end just like this into a sort of like curled up position now we need to straighten out the two fingers here the middle finger and the index just like this and now a lot of animation is trial and error for me personally so I'm just kind of messing about rotating different bits and seeing if I can get it to look pretty decent I'm gonna change it just like this and rotate that out a little bit and now we're getting that kind of scissor shape let's straighten up the knuckles rotate it backwards and then just like that okay now we have our scissors um we actually just need to straighten this up a little bit more and then we're going to curl the thumb in a little bit more as well just like this Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. And if we go all the way back to the top, so I just scroll up, and let's go back to this around here. I'll just go to the start actually, and we click play. Let's see what this animation looks like. So rock, paper, and then scissors, just like that. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Like I said before, you can spend a lot more time doing it and perfecting it and making it a lot more smoother. But I think that looks pretty good for me. Next, I'm going to show you how you can actually make this into an animation because right now we have not got this saved anywhere. It's just in the sequence. And I will probably skip forward and catch you in a second when I feel like it's good enough for the video. <laughs> Right, okay, so I'm pretty happy with this animation now, and we're actually going to change it into an actual animation. So let's right click the CR mannequin body, uh, not this one, the one, the top one. So right click, and then we are going to create a linked animation sequence. So just scroll for a little bit here, click here, and then rename it whatever you want. And I do recommend putting it into a animation folder if you have one. If you don't, then just create one. It just makes it a little bit easier to keep track of all your assets. I'm going to rename this just AMRPS for rock, paper, scissors. And then you can change the settings here if you want, but I'm not going to. Export to animation and open this up. And now we have our very own custom animation. Now you can see these shoulders popping a little bit. I did see this when I was doing it, but I just don't think it's necessary to sort it out for the, for the sake of this video. It'll just waste too much of your time. Now we can close out of that and remove the mannequin body from the map. And then we can go into our content folder, right click this animation sequence, oops, right click the animation sequence and convert it into or create a animation montage. Just like this. Right, okay, so let's actually use this animation. Uh, what we need to do is go into the BP third person characters blueprint. So open up your content folder, go to third person blueprints, BP third person character, or whichever character you're using. Right click and we can add a key. I'm not going to add a import mapping for the sake of this video. There's no point. We're just going to select any key we want and then click here and choose R for rock, paper, scissors. Out of pressed, we're going to search for play anim. Just like this, I'm going to click play montage. The montage to play is the one we just created. And now we can click compile 
we can click play and then when we press R on our keyboard it should play the animation. But it's not doing anything, so I've obviously made a mistake. Let me just see what this mistake is. Ah, okay. So, skeletal mesh component, it needs to be the mesh, obviously. <laughs> so if we actually just press R now, it will play rock, paper, and scissors, just like this. Now that's all looking well and good, but, as a bonus tip for anyone who stuck around to the end of the video, I'll actually show you how you can create some first person animations. Now if we go back into the content characters mannequins and drag our CR mannequin back into the scene we could either position our camera behind our player just like this and we could animate from here but it would be pretty hard to just animate it from this position because we have to obviously grab certain parts of the body and drag them and move them to how we want. So we can import our camera so let's just search camera here we're going to search for camera actor, just like this, and drag this in, just behind the player, and rotate it just like this. Make sure it is behind the player like that, like you would do in a first person game. Position it accordingly, so let's rotate it just so we can see the arms a little bit. And let's pin it to the screen. Now we could either do it like this, and then we can just like fly around and animate it. Let me just position this a little bit better. We could basically do what we did a minute ago and just animate just like this, right? So if we position the arms just inside the camera like that. This is how we would create our first person camera animations. But that is a okay way to do it, but there is actually another better way to do it, which I'll show you now. Okay, so with the camera selected, what we could actually do is add the camera to our sequencer. So let's select this camera in the details panel, just like this. Right click, make sure it's selected, and oh wait, no, click add here and actor to sequencer, and it's going to add the camera. Now you can see that the camera actor is selected on the left hand side, and the little camera icon was blue, but I've just deleted it by accident. My bad. So let's just re add that, actor to sequencer, and then we're going to look for the camera, like that. Now when the camera is blue, in this little checkbox here, it means we are controlling the camera. And here we go. We can actually animate in first person inside the sequencer, just like this. That's going to do it for today, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, so I appreciate anybody that subscribes. And I will catch you in the next one.